Well, it's there are there are things that that worked. So I looked I looked at all the zero tax states in the U.S. and uh, and it's always you don't. You know, I think the way you ask the question gets at it, which is you don't live in a you know in theory a lot of stuff happens on a state level, but you don't live in a state. You live in a city, and so um, if you're somewhat biased towards living in a, at least a moderately sized city. Um, okay, I can. There are. I think there are four states where there are no cities: Alaska, Wyoming, um, South Dakota, New Hampshire. There's zero tax, but um, no cities to speak of. Um, and then you have, um, then you have Washington State with Seattle, where the weather is the worst in the country. You have um, Nevada with Las, Las Vegas, which I'm not that big a fan of. <laughs> and then that leaves three. Three zero tax states. You have Texas, which I like as a state, but I'm not that big a fan of Austin, Dallas, or Houston. And I, you know, it's a sort of um, Houston. It's just sort of an oil town, which is good if you're in that business, but otherwise not. Um, Dallas has sort of an inferiority complex to L.A. and New York. You know, <laughs> just not not the healthiest attitude. And then um, you know, I don't know. Austin's a government town and a college town. And a wannabe hipster San Francisco town. So, you know, my, my book's sort of three strikes and you're, you're kind of out too. And then that leaves, um, that leaves Nashville, Tennessee, which was, and then, uh, or Miami, South Florida. And those, those would be my two cho- top choices. Miami's fun, but I wouldn't want to live there. It's a fun place to visit. It's a little too crazy, a little too chaotic, a little too cocaine fueled, a little too party, party, party. I think it's, I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty segmented from, the tourist, the tourist strip from everything else. It it probably is, you know, there probably is something a little bit paradoxical about any place that gets lots of tourists, right. where um, you know, it's 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 in some sense of a case. There's some things that are great about it because so many tourists go, but then in some sense, it's um, it creates a weird aesthetic because uh, the you know the day to day vibe is that you don't. You don't work and you're just having fun or something, something like that. Right, because so many people are going and, there just to do that. And that's that's probably a little bit off with the South Florida, the South Florida thing. But uh, but I think it's um, and then I think uh, and then I think Nashville is 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 a, also sort of its own real place. Nashville's great. Yeah. So those those would be my those are the top two. I I could live in Nashville, no problem. Yeah. I'm probably always I'm always I'm always too. Uh, you know, I, fifth grade onward since, you know, 70, 77, I lived in California. And, uh, and, and so I'm just a sucker for the weather. And I think there is no place besides coastal California where you have really good weather year-round in the U.S. May, maybe Hawaii's pretty good. And, coastal California's tough to beat. And, um, and you're two hours from the mountains. And man, it's like, you know, it's mid-August here in Austin. This is just, it's just brutal. Is it? I, I think so. Really? That was too hot for you? It was too hot for Today's me. Today's mild. I, well, what is it out there? Like 80? All right. 85? Uh, 96. 96? You're proving my point. I do so much sauna that I literally don't even notice it. I'm outside for hours every day shooting arrows, and I don't even notice it. Well, that's uh, – I, I don't know if you're a representative of the average Austin I president. don't know, but I think you get accustomed to it. To me, it's so much better than too cold. Too cold, you can die. And I know you can die from the heat, but you probably won't, especially if you have water. You'll be okay. But you could die from the cold. Cold's real. So really cold places, there's five months out of the year where your life's in danger, where you could do something wrong. Like if you live in Wyoming mm-hmm. and you break down somewhere and there's no one on yep. the road, you could die out there. That's real. You could die from exposure. Sure. There's probably some very deep reason there's been a net migration of oh, people yeah. to the, su- the west and the south and the U.S. over – California, you can do no decades. wrong. As long as the earth doesn't move, you're good. As long as there's no tsunamis, you're good. It is a perfect environment virtually year-round. It gets a little hot in the summer, but again, coastal, not at all. If you get an 80-degree day in Malibu, it's unusual. You know, right. It's wonderful. Right. you got a beautiful breeze coming off the ocean. Sun's out. Everybody's pretty. But the, and, then, 
And then it's yeah, it's it's correlated with confiscatory taxation. Yes, they, they all, of it's all sort of a package deal. Well, it's a scam. You know, they know you don't want to leave. I didn't want to leave California. It's been great. I, I, I appreciate you left. I always I always have the fantasy that if enough people like you leave, it'll put pressure on them. But it's it's never quite enough. Never quite enough, and it's not going to be. It's too difficult for most people. It was very difficult for me, and I had a, a bunch of people working for me that were willing to pack up and leave, like young Jamie over there. But we, you know, it was tricky. You're, you're taking your whole business, and my business is talking to people. That's part of my business. My other business is stand-up comedy. So, so you, you left during during COVID? or I left at the very beginning. As soon as they started locking things down, I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers are never letting March, this March, April, May 2020? In May, I started looking at houses. Cool. That's when I came to Austin first. Um, I, I, ended, I got a place in Miami in September of 2020, and um, – and spent the last, you know, I spent the last four winters there. So I'm sort of always on the cusp of of uh, moving to Florida. Hard, hard to get out of California. Um, but the, th- the thing that's gotten a lot harder about moving relative to four years ago, and you know, I, I'd say, I think my real estate purchases have generally not been not been great over the years. I mean, they've done okay, but not, certainly not um, not the way uh, not the way I've um, been able to. Um, Make money at all, but uh, th- with the one exception was Miami. Bought it in September 2020, and probably you know for- fast forward um, four years, it's up like a hundred percent, wow, or so- something like that. And um, and uh, and then, but then paradoxically, this also means it's it's gotten much harder to move there or Austin or or any of these places. You know, if you um, you know, if if uh, if I relocated my office in LA, uh, the people who own houses, you know, okay, you have to you have to buy a place in Florida. It costs twice as much as it did four years ago, and then the interest rates have also doubled. And so you get a thirty-year mortgage. You could have locked that in for three percent in twenty twenty. Now it's you know maybe six and a half, seven percent. So the prices have doubled. The mortgages have doubled. So it costs you four times as much to buy a house. And so. Uh, yeah, so there was a moment where people could move during COVID, and it's it's gotten dramatically harder relative yeah. to what it was four years ago. Well, the Austin real estate market went crazy, and then it came back down a little bit. And it's in that down a little bit spot right now, where there's a lot of like high end properties that are still for sale. They can't move. It's different, you know. It's, there's not a lot of people moving here now like there was in the boom because everything's open everywhere.